David Toller here with Supplemental Seminary. In this video, I want to talk to you about the DBX286S and how you can use its preamp and process or process your voice in real time for live streams and so forth using one microphone. In fact, you're listening to it right now. Let's look at the DBX and so let me show you how it works. You're seeing it on the screen right now. I'll be with you every step of the way. You say, well, first of all, why would I want any of this? Well, you'd want this because it processes your voice in real time, all right, for live streams. And we can see all the indicator lights that are lighting up as I speak. And let's look into it in detail and show you the value of this device. Now, what I want to mention, first of all, is the chain, the audio chain that I'm using right now. And all the equipment and th everything I mentioned here and used for this video will be in the links will be in the description below. But we're using the Rode Procaster, which is a broadcast dynamic microphone. And we're using that now. We're coming out of the back, XLR, running down the Rode boom arm, coming into the back of the DBX on the back XLR in the input. And then we're, pro we're the preamp, then we're processing the voice. And then we're coming out. We have this plugged in. And then we're coming out quarter inch on the back, quarter inch cable. Maybe you can see that. Maybe you can't. But the quarter inch cable, one end. And on the other end, I have it going XLR into my Scarlett or well, Focusrite, excuse me, Focusrite iTrack Solo, which is the same as the Scarlett Solo. And I always recommend this one. I found this one, you know, kind of on sale. So, is a package deal, so I bought this one. It's the same thing. I always recommend the Focusrite. This one just allows you to hook into a iPad, which the cable didn't even come with it. So it serves as a, uh, a chain to be able to get this into my computer. Again, microphone, XLR cable, and then we're coming through and processing my voice through the DBX 286S, and we're using compressor. We have a de which is removing the semblance in my voice an enhancer, and then we have a gate, and then we're using the output. All right, so coming in here, XLR, from one input microphone, which the inputs on the back is going to be XLR and quarter inch, and then I've got an output quarter inch on this side to XLR to the audio interface and whatever audio interface you have that should work, and then that's taking it into my computer, USB, and then I am using, as you can see on the screen, I'm using OBS, Open Broadcast Software, in order to bring this video to you. Let's look at the, the device here. All right, so we have, first of all, as we're coming, the input from my microphone, as I'm using this Rode Procaster, it is a dynamic broadcast dynamic microphone, which requires a tremendous amount of gain to drive. It's a very passive microphone. And the benefit to that is it's not going to pick up a lot of background noise and so forth. If you don't have a treated room, I always recommend a dynamic microphone as you're hearing right now, because it's very quiet. When I first got this microphone, I didn't know what to know now. And I thought, man, this thing's not as great as everybody was talking about. I didn't realize that it required a lot of gain. All right, so if you don't have something like this, you're going to have to buy like a cloud lifter, which gives you clean, boosted gain without driving a preamp so loud that you're going to introduce a lot of noise. The great thing about the DBX is it's providing the gain. You can see I'm on about 3 o'clock on the gain dial, and it is providing me a clean signal. It is driving this very passive microphone, this Rode, Procaster, if you have a Shure SM7B, it's going to require a lot of gain. The good thing is the DBX can handle that. And we have the line level indicators, which were in the green, which is very good. We can touch this green button every once in a while. If we get a little louder, you see it's lighting up. We get over the yellow, that's going to be okay. But I, on this device, I would rather stay and maybe light up that first green one every now and then. Once you get over here in the yellow, you have the potential to clip and when you clip you are distorting and there is no way to correct that in post you're just kind of stuck with it there's no way to go over that or change it next is going to be 
48 volt of phantom power, which I do not have engaged because I'm using a dynamic microphone. 48 volt phantom power is reserved for condenser microphones. And I do have some condenser microphones in my studio, which would be Rode NT1. And then also have the uh, TechZone Audio Stellar X2 Vintage, which is a condenser uh, microphone. Okay, large diaphragm condenser microphone. Requires 48 volt phantom power, but I'm using dynamic. I do not need that engaged. That may be something helpful in the future to know about. Now we have a 80 hertz high pass filter. This also can be referred to as a low cut filter. So anyway, two ways to look at this same principle. This is high pass. So everything over 80 hertz is allowed to pass in and, and allowed in. Anything under that low cut, it will cut it out. So I have engaged that. It helps to get rid of some of the background noise and everything above, you know, below that 80 hertz. So I think it's around 100 hertz and, and below is not really needed because the human voice doesn't even touch that mostly. All right, so let me take that off and you can hear it. All right, this is with the high pass filter off and this is with the high pass filter on. The next button, so this is the preamp that drives the microphone. You see the one section, preamp, mic preamp. And then we're going to get into the processing. This is where the magic happens here. All right. So what I can do is I can bypass all this processing. In fact, I'm going to do that. And as I'm speaking, I have bypassed all the effects. And so that's, this is what it sounds like. And what you're hearing right now is the clear audio just from the preamp that is coming from the Rode Procaster. And this is what it sounds like with no processing it has a good uh, a very good sound and tone to it but there's a, a great especially to the trained ear and if you have a good pair of headphones that you're listening to like right now i have on some uh, studio headphones i can tell a big difference here in several things in my voice let me go ahead and turn processing back on and this is what it sounds like when i'm coming through the compressor deesser the enhancer and the expander and the gate. So let me explain these to you. The compressor is gives you that radio voice because what it's doing is if you've seen some sound waves and you have kind of the, they're just all over the place. If you open out audacity and bring in the input and you've got, I mean, your waves are all over the place. All right. So you, you want to be able to compact them or compress them so it's easier to listen to. It's going to bring your lows. Okay. So like, for example, right now I could turn the compressor off. So I'm going to take that all the way down. So you see my voice seems lower and really I, I didn't change the gain or anything. I just drove down the compressor. But if I bring that back up and I put this one on about a five, what I'm doing is I'm bringing that lower level up in the bottom of a voice and the higher lower and we're compressing that so that if I move away from the microphone or to the side of it, then it's picking me up. You can see it's going to take my lows and, and then my highs. Now let me turn that completely off and try that again. If I turn this all the way down, you can see I get real quiet when I come around the microphone and when I get in front of it, you can see that my voice is, is the highs and the lows. So when I bring this compressor back up, what it's doing is it is making everything level. This one is the density or the, uh, that was allowing the, well, it says density, but there's another word for it. Uh, I guess it could be considered almost a ratio or something to that effect. But anyway, you can see here with the density that if I lower this down, it's, it's, taking it and it will release that compressor slower. All right. And as I go off, it, go up, it's going to release it very quickly. So you see that the indicator lights are going down very quickly. So I'm going to move these dials a little bit. This is all the way up, releasing it very quickly and not hanging on to it. And then probably 
if I go, well, not probably, but if I go all the way down, you'll see it releases it slower. You got to kind of play with that a little bit. I kind of leave it on about a five right now. I think that's okay. Let's move on. This one, very important. In fact, uh, it's good to know yourself. My wife hates that I say that, but it's good to know yourself and it's good to realize about your voice and know that no vo human voice is perfect. And that's one of the reasons that we want to be able to process it is <clears throat> to take out some of the harshness. This is a de-esser. A de-esser helps with those S's that s sound. And you, in fact, you can see, oh, excuse me. You can see as I am doing the S's s or CH, okay, that you can see the, or like church, church, snake. It is taking up that, uh, it is engaging the de -esser. Two things about, well, a couple things about this is a de -esser helps with those S's. Any voice, with my voice, I have some bass there. I have some lower end, but I also have a lot of semblance as I really have been doing live streaming and YouTube videos and things like that. So you definitely want to be able to, uh, you know, process that and take that out, that, that harshness when it comes to an S and semblance. That's going to be found between uh, 4 kilohertz and 8. And so I found mine about right here. So that, that's going to take out the S's. All right. And the, the semblance in one, one's voice. And one of the ways you can see that engaging, we're seeing about the semblance in someone's voice. So see, it's engaging. In fact, I could take that up a little bit more. The voice has semblance. Okay. All right. So next, let's go to the enhancer. There's going to be a, as you can see, an LF, which is think about low, and then HF, which is going to be high. So think low, think bass. So let me really turn this up and you'll see what I'm talking about. As I'm coming over here and in, you see the bass in my voice is getting ridiculous. All right. See how it is at, <laughs> oh man, that's terrible when it comes to the bass. So let me bring that down. So you can really hear that bass. Now you have to play with this and adjust it. It's always something we're adjusting, but I, for mine, I think about a two for the bass. Cause I do have some bass in my voice. I bring that down to about a two or so. Now with the, let's go to the highs. You think that real articulation on the top end, uh, bright, which can be a little piercing to the ears with the high. So I'm going to take that up and really emphasize it. And I don't have to go much further than that. If you can hear just how crispy on the top end, way too crisp, way too hot. Okay. You do want to, you know, bring a little crispness on the top end, but not that much. So I'm thinking about maybe, maybe a two is about where I had it, a two and a half, something like that. If I was to turn it all the way down, this is what it sounds like. And then if I was to bring it up to about a five, you can, you can really hear that. And then if I was to bring it up to a 10, this is what it sounds like. And so I don't want that much. I want to bring it back down, uh, probably about a, maybe a, like I said, a two and a half sounds pretty good. Let's move over to the expander and the gate. And just think about a gate allowing things in. So with this gate, we have a threshold and you could probably see up here with, let me get in the shot up here on OBS. You see the indicator lights on the, on the computer screen above you. And when it comes over here to the threshold, all right, that we're going to allow this to about negative 30 is all we're going to allow in the gate. Okay. Negative 30. All right. So I've got it set on there. I think it works pretty good. And then the ratio, this is something I can tell you. If you got a good pair of headphones, you can listen. I'm going to introduce some line noise, some background noise, my fan. There is noise more than you realize in a room. I'm going to turn this down and introduce that line noise to you. And then I'm going to show you where I'm going to 
increase the ratio and get rid of that noise. Perhaps it is something my, you know, my, I think my wife's running the dishwasher. You may be able to hear that. Let me turn this down and I'm going to be quiet and hopefully you can drive up your my your uh, speakers and hear this. I hear a little bit of it introduced there. And right, I've turned it all the way down. I've, I've allowed that noise, that line noise, that hiss. So hopefully you can hear that. Now what I want to show you is I increase the ratio. I'm going to completely get a, a, away from that fan noise and line noise. Listen. Okay, I about hear it totally off right there. Now it's completely destroyed all that background. Yes. So at 2.1, I'm going to be quiet. And you can listen and hear how clean the audio is. Based upon if I was to turn it all the way down, now listen. back up. The last button I want to show you has to do with the gain. Also has an indicator light when it comes to clipping, which is bad. All right. It is distortion. And this one, I can control the output to the focus, right? All right. I, and by the way, this is important. Also on the focus, right? I have the gain turned all the way down to zero. That's important. And I can drive it here. Let me show you. As I'm turning this up, I'm increasing the gain that you are hearing and bringing up that volume. That's through the output. And it's a little too hot because I'm getting some red on the focus right. So let me bring it down. I got it on about a 10. So that's good. So you see the effects and all of the DBX 286S and how it is helping process my voice and how it can help you. And this is just an audio signal chain. There are many ways to get where you want to go. If you are looking to process your voice, of course, if the cheapest way is going to be to, this book does not come with it, by the way, as you as a prop to prop that up. The cheapest way to process your voice is going to be able to learn how to use a DAW, such as a uh, something like Audacity, or you could use Adobe Audition and pro post-process it, I mean, after the fact, after the video and process it. But one of the things that makes this great is you're doing it in real time. It kind of helps with workflow, because once I do this video, I can post it to right to you know YouTube, and it's already done. And I don't have to go back and change anything. So that, that's the idea of this entire piece of equipment. Hope that's been a help to you. And let me know if you have any questions or comments in the section below. I'm no audio expert by no means. I'm just learning along with you and want to try to help you as much as I can when it comes to live streaming and church audio. Be sure to subscribe. If the video was helpful, be sure to give me a like and we're, Last I checked, I was at 99 subscribers. If you'd be, you might be the hundredth, and I would appreciate that very much. Let me know if I can help you in the future or you're interested in any other type of thing that's connected with audio, live streaming, small church solutions. In the meantime, this is David Toller with Supplemental Seminary.